Well, as we talk about Secretary Geithner in China, let's talk about investing in Chinese stocks. The Oberweiss China Opportunities Fund has raked in 35% returns betting on China over the past year. That makes it the second best performer out of China-focused funds based here in the U.S. Right now, we're joined by Oberweiss's Jeff Papp. He helps oversee that China fund, and he's joining us from Chicago. Jeff, thanks a lot for joining us. We appreciate it. Sure, nice to be with you. So when we talk about China, a lot of people have been looking at the declines that we've seen in the market there, and there is more caution. But you actually think there's perhaps too much caution. Why? Well, I think what we've seen so far year to date is the amount of negative sentiment towards China and China's equities is probably amongst the highest that we've seen in over five and a half years. And really what we're seeing is, is this coming from U.S. and European investors who are really seeing economic statistics in China that are quite good and extrapolating them and saying that they can't be true. This is in stark contrast to what we're actually seeing on the ground in China. On the ground in China, confidence is extremely high. Wages are going up. Consumers are spending. And we really are seeing a wide range of businesses performing well. So there's a great amount of difference between seeing what's on the ground going on in China as opposed to what most U.S. investors are talking about. Well, and, and Jeff, what about though the disconnect as well between what the scenario you're describing on the ground and what's happening to stocks, to Chinese stocks? Yeah, again, and I think this has to go back to the sentiment right now. And the sentiment in the short run can impact the stock prices, but over the long term it's going to be determined by cash flows and fundamentals. And right now we're seeing extremely good cash flows generating from companies and extremely good fundamentals. So we think over the long term, this is setting up for a nice place to be in the second half of the year for Chinese equities. Jeff, let me ask you about what was going on in real estate China. We have leverage levels there extremely low, people putting down 40 to 50 percent when buying a home. What's the real estate scenario look like there? Yeah, I think it's, it's, it's very d difficult when you think about Chinese real estate because on one hand, was there some speculation that occurred? There, there's no question that there was speculation that occurred. Was there some state-owned enterprises that at the beginning of last year were able to access cheap and really be available financing from the central banks? And, and did they take that money and try to earn a higher return by, by playing in the, in the property market? There was a lot of that that did occur. But not, in the, but not people, nowhere near the same level that occurred here, correct? Well, yeah, and, and that's exactly right for one reason. That, that reason is leverage. Um, it, it's inherent in the Chinese culture that, that they don't like to take out debt. They're afraid of debt. Yeah. So that's one key difference that you have here. And, and at the same point, they put a lot of 40 to 50 percent in the down payment when, when buying a property. Hey, Jeff, well, let's get to some of your picks here. And I, it looks like you're looking at mostly ADRs of Chinese uh, stocks. Um, one of them is a water treatment equipment provider. Um, I'm going to get you to pronounce it, and I'm going <laughs> to get you to tell us why you like it. <laughs> Sure, the name is Duwan Global Water. Uh, it's listed on the New York Stock Exchange in the ticker DGW. And this is a name that's been hit pretty hard this year on the fears that the Chinese government was going to rein in spending. And we think that's very true in the aggregate amount, but it really depends on what sector and industry you're, you're talking about. So these guys provide filtration equipment that goes into large wastewater treatment equipment plants. And it's very widely known and widely accepted in China that about 70% of the water is undrinkable. So we're going to see a huge push by the Chinese government to go out and make sure that their water issue is addressed, and, and Duong Global should stand to benefit. So this was a name that's been hit hard on fears that China's spending was going to slow down, but actually we yeah. think that spending on water in China is going to be increasing. All right, Jeff, uh, thank you so much for joining us. Jeff Papp is a senior analyst at Oberweiss Asset Management, helps oversee the Chinese investments there. Well, well.